it softly, say it quietly, but Blackburn Rovers are back, top of the table, of course, over the championship after a fantastic 2-1 win over West Bromwich Albion. How did we do it? I'll tell you all about it next. Right, folks, Papa's giving another match review. Looking back at Blackburn Rovers' latest match out of the championship, and we'll get to that in just one second. If you know where you're in, smash your subscribe button, bang at the all things Rovers related, championship related, World Cup related. We've got it all here, boys. Under one Ruski, what a afternoon of football, evening football, morning football, wherever you are in the world. Rovers back, sitting pretty at the top of the table for yet another day, of course. I thought it would be over this weekend, but no, we remain there, of course. Make it three wins from three. We'll take a look at it, all of that in a minute. Of course, big shout out to the VIPs. Who are they? They are the patrons of guys. But uh, what are we talking about? We're talking about this, guys. It's a 2 1 win over West Brom at Ewood Park in a game, as you can see from the stats there, bossed by West Brom. They had 59% of the possession. We had 41. They had 13 shots on the night. We had seven. But the score, the only man, the only numbers that matter is the one at the top of the screen there. The 2-1 win over West Brom. Of course, we took the lead on the just a few minutes before halftime. Diaz with a strike, uh, of course. He had a bit of a shit, shit, shit afternoon, to be honest with you. I think we all had a bit of a shit afternoon up until that moment. Uh, and, of course, I think it was Gallagher with the assist, someone saying. I think they actually uh, alternated uh, uh, goals and assists between each other. But... Um, Gallagher, the playmaker, setting up Diaz to put Rovers in front. 41 minutes on the clock. Went into halftime with my tail up with, of course, all kinds of things sticking right up there. That's right. Rovers, uh, fantastic stuff, uh, of course. And in the second half, we burst off. And again, let's, let's, let's give Westmore a bit of credit. They were the better side for that for, for 40 of those 41 minutes. We just took that one minute and, and made it count. And that's the difference that, we're, that, that we are seeing here from Blackburn Rovers. It's that, is that uh, ability to contain the opposition and of course take our chances whenever they come around and it came around on the 31st minute Diaz smashing it home to add another million pounds onto his valuation uh meanwhile of course like I said at half time Rovers came out of the blocks with a I don't know just felt like a completely different sort of unit we had to move a few players around but Callum Britton was taken off uh, I believe it's through heat stroke or or something I think he's gonna be bouncing back uh, for the Wednesday game but uh yeah, Britton was out Buckley moved to the right back slot T uh, Tyler Morton came on to of course provide the uh, the creativity in midfield and it seemed to give a, a bit of a sh electric shock to Blackburn Rovers they uh, instantly uh, uh, added to that tally with of course a Gallagher goal on the 47th minute to make it 2-0 and at that point we were looking very very good and there was opportunities maybe to add the third and stuff like that and put this game to bed uh, but uh, of course uh, you cannot write off West Brom with the amount of quality they have on the field uh, and they were peppering the goal they were trying to get them they were trying to get that all in with elusive third goal to get themselves right back in it and they got it. Uh, it's been it's been categorised as a Grady Dianganga goal on the 59th minute. It was his strike, but I believe it took a ricochet off Ashley Phillips uh, in the back line, who put in the ball in the back of the net. To be honest with you, I thought it was a big fat OG. Uh, but anyway, that gave West Brom a, a, a right good old lifeline in this game. They look home and hose at two 0 down, but this uh, pulled them right back in the thick of things. And as you can see, 13 shots for them on on the night, uh, five, just five off target, five off target, uh, and then the rest must have been on target or blocked or whatever. They had 14 free kicks compared to us. 16. Uh, they had five corners to our one as well. And with the dead ball specialist on there, we did ride our luck. Uh, let's take a look at the starting 11s and fast, shall we? Of course, starting with the, with the hosts, Kaminsky between the sticks. Ayala still there. Uh, Phillips, of course, doing very, very well. Pickering and Britain. Uh, you know, again, uh, uh, let's give Ashley Phillips a bit of credit here. 17 years of age, still wearing nappies. He is a baby, baby, baby. Uh, he's still getting probably breastfed. I'm sure he is. He's that young. Um, he shouldn't be playing uh, professional football, but he is. He doesn't even have a sponsor on his shirt. That's how incredibly young he is. Uh, Travis Buckley in that midfield slot. Uh, then we had Sammy Smodic, of course, in the attacking midfield uh, zone. Didn't really, didn't really get much action today. Uh, but again, he was part of a winning system. And since he's been here, we've been unbeaten. Of course, Gallagher, Diaz and Edges. And again, Hedges probably had one of his worst days at the office uh, today with a little action or little creative influence. Uh, as for the substitutions, we did see four of them. Uh, Tewa Dunn came on later, later on. Uh, Tyler Morton as well. Uh, Braddy Dacarino and and Ty Tyrese Dolan, who did all uh, bits to help Rovers in this uh, second half. As for the opposition, David Butler between the sticks, that is the weak link for me. Let's take a look at the valuations of these te the, the, this team here. He is uh, considerably uh, under, under that, well, just, just not, not valued enough. Uh, when you had Sam Johnson last season, probably would have 
probably would have fared better, I thought, today. But Button is a weak link, and that's where I think they need... If, they, if they're if going to roll into the transfer, uh, past the transfer window with David Button between the sticks, I feel West Brom will not be uh, contenders. I think that's a weak link, a serious weak link for West Brom. Uh, but, but when you look at the rest of them, they're all uh, uh, are just over... Over a million pounds rated, if not more than that. Uh, they have Darrow O'Shea at the back there, Sammy Ajay, Connor Townsend, Furlong as well, uh, making up a back four. Livermore, Malumbi, Jeb Wallace up there, of course, Swifty as well, the Nganga and Carlin Grant as well. They did uh, throw on some other players. Uh, surprising, though, Yoko Salu did come on. Uh, again, uh, added by Tim Madfield. I don't know why he didn't start. I really don't. Uh, mind boggles me. But fortunately, Steve Bruce knows what he's doing. Uh, Adam Reach came on as well. Callum Robinson as well. And uh, Matt Phillips, 31 years of age as well. Callum Robinson, 27. Still got a, still got a, bit, of, a bit of life left in those legs. And he did cause some problems when he came on as well. Let's take a look at the shot grid now then, shall we? Rovers are represented by the Orange. A lot of central shots there coming at you. Brereton with a couple of them, of course. Uh, Gallagher as well. Hedges with a, with a strike. Dakarino got involved. Dolan and Morton all had strikes. But as you can see, it was West Brom. They peppered us a little bit. Wallace with three of them. Dianganga two. Just Swift one. Uh, Ajay with a couple as well from the back. Uh, Grant uh, Townsend uh, to make up that. And Furlong as well to make up the set there. They had 700 touches compared to around 545. We had 366 passes compared to the 519. But again, the stat that really matters is what is on top of the graphic there. 2 1 win in favour of Rovers. Take a look at the, at the average ratings. Now, this is, of course, a third party point of view, not mine. I'm not going to be biased, but they give the man of the match performance, I believe, to Diaz with an 8.1. Then Sam Ganga gets a 7.6, basically for the match involvement, a goal and an assist and a peach uh, there. Dean Ganga gets credited with 7.4, to be honest with you. I think that's, that's a little bit of a false news there, fake news. I don't think he does. Deserve that. I don't think I don't doesn't really get the goal. Phillips with of course with a big fat OG. 6.7 for him. Uh, uh who else do we have? Samuel Sodich with a 6.8, Hedges with a 6.7. They are a little bit tainted and twisted, these ratings. Um, I didn't think Kaminsky had a couple of saves to make and it definitely deserved a better rating than David Button. And of course, down the bottom there, you can see the stats graph of where things happened. Of course, Gallagher picking up an early yellow, which he they managed that well. Rovers managed that well. He managed it as well, kept his composure. Buckley also picked up a, a yellow, I believe. Uh, as did Travis. Uh, so uh, a couple of uh, a couple of yellow cards to nurse over the next few days. But injuries were the main uh, key key figure for us today. We end, we started with this back four of Pickering, Ayala, Ash Phillips, and Britain, and then we ended up with Taylor Dunn, uh, Pickering, Ayala, and then Buckley at the back four. So yes, we need to get those players in. We'll hear a little bit about uh, about that in a minute from the gaffer himself, JDT. Uh, but Vandenberg is close, and hopefully we'll get over the line uh, tomorrow, and then we. We will uh, put him straight in the squad, I think, at least to uh, to uh, to to probably partner Ayala on Wednesday, which I think will give Phillips. I think Phillips needs to get out of this uh, with his head held high and maybe even sign the fucking contract, pal. Uh, as for, of course, uh, 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 West Brom standouts, David Dario Roche, 7.2. He had a couple of amazing runs. Jade Wallace as well, who uh, will, they will get, they'll be fine. They will be absolutely fine. Uh, but uh, today it was our day. Let's take a look at the heat maps then, shall we? Rovers are represented by the top graphic there. Not really peppering them in in the attacking third. There has been mainly in the in the in the midfield uh, section there for Rovers. West Brom all over the place, and again preferring their left hand side to our right. Um, but that is just a little bit of the, the heat of the action. And that is that is what we see from the stats and the data. What does JTT have to say about the match? Uh, of course, uh, after the final whistle. Uh, I was actually wearing shorts as well here, yeah? so you need to wear shorts. When it's so hot in England. It never happened before, more or less. No, it was, a, it was of course a fantastic result against one of the better sides in the league, one of the one of the teams who who are bigger, and uh, and we are regarding uh, the, the parachute money as as well. One of the teams who need to be up there. So it was a it was a great performance. We we, we knew that uh, with those good players, they would ask a lot of questions regarding how to cope with different situations. But when players did a did a tremendous job coping with those situations. They stick together uh, under difficult circumstances. Uh, not only only the the, the 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 weather, but of course also the changes uh, before the game, during the game as well. Uh, so in that way, it was tough. But you could see the team spirit. Uh, so we should enjoy the win uh, with our fans. There was a, there was a great atmosphere during the during the game, and in the end, you could see the happiness and the, all the faces as well. I think we scored two great goals. I would call them. Uh, PlayStation goal, FIFA goals, if you can say that, one or two touches. Lovely to see. Great finishing as well. 
really good. Both of them. Do you have a favourite of the two? They were both so well <laughs> taken, weren't they? Uh, I don't. I, uh, I think I will get in trouble with my players if I choose one, don't you think? <laughs> it, uh, two nil right at the start of the second half. That's a huge moment of the match, isn't it? Of course. Uh, football games is about a couple of moments doing a game. And of course, when, they, when, when they, we conceded a goal on a reflection, uh, I'll say, oh, it's going to be tough. Because the side, uh, West Brom is a good side. And, and it was tough. But I'm happy to see how, how hard the, the boys work for the club. Uh, which we need, but it's not always like that. On the difficult circumstances. And, and of course, the goal we conceded with a deflection, yeah. Uh, the first goal uh, we conceded in the in, in, in in league and then a goal like that can happen but of course it's disappointing. I know Thomas was not happy with it, he will have love a clean sheet. In terms of the work rate your players have had to put in today and the heat, <coughs> I'm sure you'll look at the stats in, in more detail tonight and tomorrow but the stats will be quite significant, won't they, how far they've run today for you? Yeah, you're totally right. Uh, if you see the, the, the way they, they're fighting and also in the end with the weather, they are more or less dead, everybody. But uh, normally uh, winning games uh, helps in that way. And we're of course proud of winning a game again. And, and I like winning, the boys like winning, but still we're under construction and we work hard to become better every day. But football is about passion. And, and of course, when you see the happiness, uh, then you also get happy. You have lost two more players due to injury today, bringing them off. How's Callum Britton? I think it was, it was tough with the weather in, in that way. Uh, he was not the only one who complained about the weather because, yeah, as you know, uh, under difficult circumstances. Uh, and it was good that we could have this drinking break as well. We needed that. So, uh, yeah, hopefully he, he's all right now after, after this hot weather. Uh, but it, it was not the only one who had problems with the weather. There was a lot of boys uh, actually who were struggling a bit. So was Callum taken off largely exhaustion due to the weather more yeah. than an injury? Yeah. And was Ash Phillips pretty similar? Uh, no, he, he, you know, he played his first game the other day. He played uh, against Hartlepool. Uh, young boy, 70 years old. Uh, he did a tremendous job, uh, big talent. Uh, he got help from his teammate. He got help from Daniel Ayala, uh, which have the experience, uh, the leadership. But he, he just became 17 in June and playing a game like that. He got cramped. And you can't play with a central defender with cramp uh, because they could cost a goal. Uh, and, and I think he, he did really well. I think the family should be proud of him. It was nice to see. Scott Wharton didn't make it today. Jon, how long is he going to be out for? Yeah, he, the other day I, I sat here after the game and I talked about, no, we took him off because he, he was okay. But uh, I got a surprise after the game and uh, he was not okay. And, and, and this is, of course, disappointing because this is one of the positions uh, which we are, yeah, we don't have a lot of defenders, you know that as well. So he's, he's, he's not ready and he will not be ready for playing on, on Wednesday as well or in, in the whole week here. So hopefully we can get him back as soon as possible. But it will take a couple of weeks. That's a really big blow. Um, how quickly do you need these defenders in now? Will you, have you already been speaking to Greg Broughton every five minutes about <laughs> when it will be already? Yeah, but as I told you, as I told you before, all those questions about Greg, he, uh, the club needs to provide the things. Uh, I, I, I know what I want and, and they need to work hard to get it. They're working hard, uh, but they also need to get the right ones in. But hopefully we are getting players in, yeah. Is it pretty imminent, do you think, that someone will be coming in? In, in football, nothing is, is sure before they're, they're standing next to you. Mm. I'm just looking at, at the way you've started the season, three league wins and a, a cup win as well. It's the first time since 1988 since Blackburn Rovers have won three league games at the start of a season. You're the only team in this division to do that, Jan. How pleased are you with that? I'm extremely pleased, especially when you start a new project, uh, which is this. Uh, I said it for day one. Uh, it's, a, it's a new project. We are ambitious, but we are also thinking with patience in all our things. We, we don't have the, 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 the money as the rest of the club, so we need to do di things differently and slowly build and build. Uh, we have a, lot of, have a lot of good youngsters. We need to develop those youngsters to create, first of all, create a better team, but also value, of course. Uh, and at the end of the day, we need to be uh, a sustainable Premier League club. But we also need to go up there and stay there. So there's a, yeah, there's a project in that way. But of course, it's great and I'm very happy to celebrate uh, another win with the fans. And just lastly from me, are you able to let Daniel Ayala train at all at the moment? Because he's the <laughs> last man standing, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. No, I think Daniel will stay in the, the, the next couple of days and I will do a bit of an old school. 
All right, then, folks, let's take a look at what happened on social media then, shall we? Take a look at Twitter then. Sean Howe said, absolutely fantastic finish. Class. Meanwhile, uh, Rovers Seas, Rovers, Rovers USA said, holy shit, we're actually going up, aren't we? It's only three days in. Let's let's calm ourselves just a little bit. Uh, Becky, or Bex BOFC said, well, that was uh, stressful. Amazing effort to get over the line. Matt McDonough was said, uh, uh, we are, Blackburn Rovers, one place behind Manchester United. JD Thomason said, what drought? Blackburn is flooded with goals and is bobbing about on top of the pond with another with just one minor leak at the back yes he's referring to us being top of the league guys top of the league Alistair Newby said not get to carry away but with ending that game with a back four consisting of a central midfielder two left backs and Ayala defensive reinforcements are needed but what a tremendous effort back to the top we go New York Rose said the last time we won the opening three was in 1998 Reagan was president the British one pound note was still legal uh, tenor, and the film Big starring Tom Hanks was released Finger Boston said top of the league looking down on the Burnley uh, indeed, Galliossi Blue said, so proud, three consecutive wins to start the season for the first time since the early 90s. I said from the minute uh, he was linked that JDT is the real deal and he continues to pro pro prove uh, me right. We weren't at our best today, but frankly, I couldn't care less. We took the W. Chris Chins said, how is it possible to be both buzzing in with excitement and fearful with dread at the same time? What a start to the season, but those injuries have dented uh, it a little bit. Meanwhile, Matt 08455254 said, a two to two promotion train next stop Ewood uh, Reese Adalis and said top of the league those last few minutes felt tense watching another win in the bag what a great set of lads we've got Tom Schofield said left everything on the pitch beyond proud of that performance unreal Mandy said beautiful Chris Martin said I know we're only three games in but that's a huge win just from a psychological standpoint last season we lose that game our be or, or bare minimum we don't win it but uh, well, we defended for our lives that second half and show great heart that slot has got some balls and um, balls they have in abundance uh, that's of course what's going on on the on a twitter sphere what else happened around the grounds then in the championship this weekend in a very very busy weekend kick it all off on friday <laughs> <laughs> Watford won, of course, at Burnley nil. Uh, that was at Vicarage Road. Uh, Watford saw a red card on that badge. I mean, we're caught up with the one win of a Birmingham. Sunderland 2, QPR uh, 2. Goalkeeper scoring on that badger as well. Millwall 3, uh, Coventry 2. They turned that sucker around. Hull were top of the league for a moment uh, with a 2 on win over Norwich. Blackpool, of course, suffered a defeat to Swansea. Russell Martin, Swansea. Uh, Preston with a zinger, apparently, against Luton Town. 1 0 win for that. 4 uh, 0 win for Rotherham Reading. We, we could do with a bit of that action on Wednesday. We'll talk about that in a minute. Huddersfield 3 1 winners of a stoke to, to maybe shut up some haters out there. Uh, Wigan Athletic 1, Bristol City 1 clawing themselves back. And also today, Middlesbrough saw uh, a 2 2 draw against Sheffield United. They cannot buy a win, can they? Let's take a look at the table. There it is. Take a snapshot. Take a, another selfie. It is Rovers at the top of the table by two points, uh, of course. And then it's Hull, then it's Watford, Mill, Cardiff, and Sunderland. Let's stop the count, guys. Uh, where's Burnley? Bloody hell, there they are, down in 11th. As for West Brom, they're down into 20th right now. And again, like Middlesbrough, Two teams that are fancied by a lot of people out there yet to get a win. Wow, wow, wee, wow. Norwich are in the relegation zone. How long has Dean Smith got left? He has, of must face some pressure. When you think that Sean Dyche is out there and some other good managers are lingering around waiting for an opportunity, Tony Mowbray could do a job for the likes of, uh, of I don't know, West Brom, Middlesbrough. I don't know. I know people will be turning their nose at that, but... Uh, but uh, they're out there. Some gaffers are out there. They're waiting for moments like this. And I think a Sean Dyche Norwich could be actually a, t a thing to, to, to keep to get excited about. I think they could be very, very special. But anyway, let's not press the panic button. But Norwich are down there with one point. Let's take a look at what's going on this week. It's a busy week. It's a double match week. And it's Norwich City. I guess Huddersfield on Tuesday. Coventry against Wigan. That's been kiboshed. The state of the pitch is a disgrace. Uh, considering we're only in the, like four games deep in the championship. Coventry cannot get the shit together. Blame the rugby boys. Blame whoever you like. But it's not great for Coventry's schedule. Let's go back, actually. They've only played two games. Am I right? Rotherham played two. Coventry played two, so yeah, that they are uh, 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 dragging themselves down. They're going to be two games behind uh, amongst everybody else. Birmingham uh, against Watford, of course, the Troy Deeney Derby. Uh, Bristol City against Luton Town, thrashed in gate. Preston up against Rotherham, that's of course that Deepdale. Swansea up against Millwall. We have Burnley up against Hull City. Uh, of course, QPR against Blackpool. Enter Wednesday, Stoke Borough. Wow, wow, wee, wow, indeed. Tony Pulis Derby, anybody? Uh, Sheffield United against Sunderland. Goodness gracious me. Reading against Rovers, that's the game of the day. Adam Majewski, we will have a watch on for that. It will be 
see me, I will be back. And West Brom against Cardiff uh, as well on uh, Mittwoch. That's Wednesday if you're German. Uh, uh, we're supposed to have another graphic there. Well, that's it. That, no, that is it. That is it. That's all she wrote. All she wrote. Make sure, of course, you give us some love and smash your thumbs up. Smash your subscribe. Check the links down below on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, and a picture. Of course, the coverage doesn't stop here for this game. We're going to have a vlog. We're going to have the fan cams. We've got it all coming at you under one Ruski. And then let's not waste no more time. We're going to be straight back at you with the Reading preview. So that will be, of course, probably tomorrow, a.k.a. Monday. So we're going to have that waiting in the wings. Uh, but until then, guys, make sure you give us some love and smash your thumbs up. Smash your subscribe. Check the links down below, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, and all that kind of jazz. But until then, girls and girls and girls and girls, we are out, but top of the league. Oh, yes. Did I say that? We're top of the fucking pops.